Lyman direction, advance of the Russian armed forces north of the Tor ledge. The offensive of Russian troops continues in the Lyman direction. As noted earlier, the main goal in this section of the front is to eliminate the Ukrainian armed forces bridgehead on the right bank of the Zarebets River. Units of the Russian armed forces are methodically pushing through the defenses of the armed forces of Ukraine in the area of the settlements of Terny and Yampolovka. According to footage published by the Ukrainian sources, the advance of Russian troops north of the broad ravine is recorded. To reach the outskirts of the villages, there is still about three kilometers to go with several forest belts. Nevertheless, Ukrainian formations are resisting, launching counterattacks and striking at the advancing assault groups of the Russian armed forces. If Tern and Yampolovka are captured by Russian forces, the AFU's position in the area of the Zurovka and Nevsky beams will become significantly more complicated, since the Ukrainian armed forces units will have to weaken their forward lines to strengthen defense against attacks from the southern flank. In addition, some Russian media report certain successes of Russian troops in the Serebryansky forestry area. However, this information has not yet been confirmed by means of objective control. Another drone raid on Crimea. What to expect next? Closer to midnight, after a missile strike, Ukrainian formations attacked the Crimean Peninsula with drones. From Nikolaev, three groups with a total number of at least 36 drones were launched into the air. The first drones were shot down on approach to Novofedorovka. If you look at the flight path, the target was obviously the airfield in Saki and it was there that the bulk of the drones were shot down. Then RF began working on drones over at Pretoria, as well as off the coast of Sevastopol. Of the 36 UAVs, only 11 were shot down by Panzer S-1 air defense missile systems and rifle squads, and 25 were suppressed by electronic warfare. It is worth noting that a couple of hours before the UAV raid from Nikolaev to the west of Crimea, Three more drones were shot down, launched from the Odessa region to assess the readiness of air defense in Crimea. The massive UAV attack did not cause any problems. All drones were destroyed and suppressed. However, such attacks pursue a different goal. Their task is to reveal the location of air defense units, their composition and the nature of their actions during raids. After this, as a rule, a more serious attack follows within a few days, for example, with crews or ballistic missiles against already identified targets. And given that at the time of the UAV strike in Crimea, one drone was also shot down in Novorossiysk, an attack could also take place near the Kerch Strait. Right after the drone attack, Ukraine launched another attack. An aviation danger was declared in the south due to the launch of unidentified missiles by Su-27 fighters over Nikolaev. Taking into account the absence of any arrivals or air defense work, these were most likely decoys, which also signal preparation for a strike. Attacks by Ukrainian formations on Crimea continue, in the area of 12.20 to 12.30 from the outskirts of Odessa, the Ukrainian armed forces launched an anti-ship missile, Neptune. But at the time of this attempt, a MiG-31 was patrolling in the air and flew out to intercept. And somewhere 80 kilometers northwest of Cape Tarkhankit, a Ukrainian missile was shot down. However, given how many false targets there were over the past 24 hours, this single Neptune is unlikely to be the last. Trends suggest that AFU attacks will increase. Crinky or how the AFU command has completely lost his mind. The AFU's attempts to move to RF right bank in order to create a springboard for subsequent actions do not stop. The AFU has on its shores all the cream of the Ukrainian unmanned school, but frantically continues to send several boats with personnel into the meat grinder to replace those already killed and now even fashionable, electronic warfare equipment on boats, which worked effectively for a short amount of time until RF forces came up with countermeasures, no longer help. 
if at the beginning the drone was lost at a distance of 50 to 70 m from the boat, now we see the picture right up to the faces frightened by the inevitable death. Although, most likely, they knew that not everyone would survive. This is what happens. Even if the AFU manages to swim to the left bank, carry out a landing and gain a foothold on rather sluggish lines, then all these attempts are completely stopped by RF artillery. Endless mountains of corpses, Krinky itself look like the moon. What is AFU army trying to achieve? River of Death Another interesting article was published by the American newspaper The Washington Post. Again, Ukrainian fighters talk about their suicidal crossings of the Dnieper, which they call the River of Death, and also complain that they are thrown, like a piece of meat to the wolves. VSU officers state in interviews that they have simply been losing people for a long time, but there has been no result. They told the American publication tearful stories about how many of them simply drown in the river under the weight of their equipment and due to injuries. Another noteworthy thing in the article is that it directly states that Ukraine did not liberate a single settlement during the operation in Krinky. The text contains quotes from the words of the Marines of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. River of Death. Thrown like a piece of meat to the wolves. We are suffering a lot of losses. We are simply losing people, but there is no result. The crossing was so dangerous that the bodies of many Marines who died in the first wave that crossed the river two months ago remained there. Infantrymen spoke of wounded soldiers drowning, unable to swim due to their injuries, or being dragged to the bottom of the river by their heavy backpacks, the newspaper writes. Many of those who control the boats that the Russians are targeting are dying. Of the group of 45 people who were thrown onto the eastern bank, five were killed and another 20 were injured. As the counteroffensive stalled, Ukrainian military and political leaders sought to show their Western backers some progress, any progress. The publication explained the meaning of holding a bridgehead, but at what cost and for how much longer.